Hey, welcome back, friends. We're talking about Algebra 1 again today. We're talking about working with decimals. That shouldn't be a big deal, should it? Let's talk about decimals, okay? What is that? You know what that is? That's pi, at least to as many places as I can just remember in my head. 3.14159265535, right? I can remember that many. Beyond that, I don't remember very many. Uh, but there's a bunch of them, right? What does... What are all these places after the decimal called, okay? We call this an integer or a whole, this is a whole number. And then this is after the decimal, we have different places, okay? This is called the, the tens place, okay? And that would just be 0.1. Okay, or, or point, the first place there, right? Not necessarily one, it could be point four, right? But just that first place, okay? The second one here is called, and, and just think about 10 is like that, right? The next one is called the hundreds place, okay? There's D on that. And that's one with another zero, right? This is called the thousands place. That's put another zero on that, right? And then so on and so forth down the line, right? This is 10K, 10,000. This is the 100,000. This is the millions place, okay? So as I keep moving down, this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionth, right? And just keep putting zeros on that as you go along, okay? And we all learned that back in grade school, so we should all know that. Well, you, some of us are in grade school, but that's okay. All right, so what we want to talk about is how those things translate into fractions. Now, some of the most popular common things that everybody should just know is something like this. A half is equal to, in decimals, what? Well, if you had half a dollar, how much would you have? 50 cents, right? which is 0 0.50, right? But there's the tens place, there's the hundreds place, okay? Other ones that you should remember, something like this, three quarters. Okay, if you have three quarters, how many dollars do you have? It's 75 cents, okay? So three quarters is 0 0.750, or 7500, zero zero, right? You could put another zero in there. How about uh, one quarter? Well, that's one quarter is 250. So how about an eighth? An eighth is 0.125, or that's pronounced 125 thousandths, okay? Because there's 125 thousandths, okay? Um, one sixteenth is 0 0.0625. Uh, one thirty second is 0 0.03125, right? These are just some decimals that I know just from working, being an engineer and working out, out in the field for a long time. And especially you'll see these kind of decimals, fractions to decimals, when you're talking about distances, okay? And you see this half, three-quarter, quarter, quarter well, sixteenth, a thirty-second. Think about a tape measure and what that is if you divide it up into an inch, right? So an eighth of an inch is 0.125 or 125 thousandths of an inch. How big is that? Uh, if I pull out one of my hairs, right, the thickness of one of my hairs is about 0, 0.007 inches. So it would be seven thousandths of an inch. That's how thick seven thousandths of an inch is, just to get an idea. So if you took an inch and subdivided it into uh, a thousand different parts, one of your hair would be seven of those little thousandths of a part of an inch, okay? So just kind of give you an idea of sizes. But Think about a tape measure and about measuring things. And uh, if you're going to be in science or an engineer, then these are important things to know is how to convert fractions to decimals, okay? Now you can also just do this. Put it in your calculator. 3 divided by 4. Mm, 3 divided by 4. In your calculator, guess what it says? 0.75, right? 1 divided by 16. What does it say? Oh, 0.0625, right? So it's easy to calculate or convert from fractions to decimals. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So, <coughs> let's 
let's think about this. Here's that decimal that we just talked about, 0.5. So I told you how to go from a fraction to a decimal, but how do you go from a decimal to a fraction? Well, that's actually kind of easy too. Because when we're talking about 0.5, what place is that 5 in? He's in the tens place. And so what is this really and truly? It's 5 tenths. Okay? How many times can 10 go into 5? 0.5 times, right? What about 0.05? Well, that's 5 over, what do you think? Tens, hundreds. Okay? And that, there's a fraction, right? Now that will reduce. How many times will 5 go into 100? Do you know? 20 times, right? How many nickels are in a dollar? 20, right? So I can convert from fractions to decimals and then decimals to fractions back and forth. It's easy to do, right? Okay, so how do I use that in some problems? Let's work some problems. Okay, so let me erase this over here. I hope that made sense to you because you're going to see this a lot. All right. All right, I have three examples for you here. Number one, two, three. Here's one, two, three. Let's see if we can work these out, and we'll use a couple of different techniques to solve these, okay? All right, number one. Okay, let's, um, let's just see if we can solve and, and the goal here is to solve this without a calculator, okay? Yes, I can put this in my calculator, and it's super easy to do, but can you use just your brain, right? Let's say you're out on a job site somewhere, and you don't have your calculator, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to use your, your brain power. So here we go. Okay, so our, remember our techniques. What we do to one side, we've got to do the other side. And we're trying to solve for X. So the, the secret is isolate X. Get X by himself. Okay, so the problem is X minus 0.2 is equal to 0.3X plus 4. Okay? Let's first gather up our terms. Okay? So... Let's subtract 3x from this side. Oh, point, point 0.3x, sorry. And we'll subtract 0.3x from that side, okay? So that goes to zero. And then we'll add 0.2 to this side. That'll go to zero. And then add 0.2 to that side, okay? So what do we have here? We have, uh, let's see, x minus 0.3x. Now x, remember, is just one. So if I have one whole and I subtract three-tenths from that, I'm left with 0.7x, okay? So a whole one minus three little bits minus 0.3, one minus 0.3 is 0.7. Now over here, I have four plus 0.2, okay? So now I can put this in my calculator and I can solve this. I can actually solve this in my head, right? Uh, I can divide both sides by 0.7, divided by 0.7, and I know that that is equal to 6. Well, how did you know that? Well, because I've been in school for a long time and I know how to do division, right? But if you didn't know that, is there a different way you could have done that? Here's way number 2, okay? So 0.7x equals 4.2. Here's way number 2. 0.7x is, is equal to... 7 tenths of x is equal to, ooh, 4 and 2 tenths, right? So 4 and 2 tenths, okay? We've got a mixed fraction. You remember how to do a mixed fraction? You multiply the bottom and you add the top. So that 4 and 2 tenths is equal to 4 times 10 is 40, plus 2 more is 42, okay? So now I have this. I have 7 tenths x is equal to 42 tenths. How do I get rid of a, of a fraction? Multiply by its reciprocal, right? So times 10 over 7 times 10 over 7. What I do to one side, I have to do the other side, right? 7s cancel out, the 10s cancel out, so that leaves me with just x on this side. And what about this side? The 10s cancel out. And then how many times does 7 go into 42? Hey, 6 times 7 is 42, isn't it? Okay. So there's two different ways to do that. Number one is just doing some division there. And number two is converting it all into fractions and doing it that way. Probably where we are now, 
since we're not like experts, this is probably the method that we ought to use since we're not uh, experts at this yet. But we'll get there, won't we? Okay, let's do another one. Okay, let's try number two. Number one was good. Is number two going to be harder? Okay, so point one Z plus 21 is equal to point three Z. Okay, mmm. This one looks a little bit good, doesn't it? All right, here we go. So let's see. Let's get our Z's on the same side, right? So I'm gonna subtract 0.1Z from this side and I'll subtract 0.1Z from that side. So 21 is equal to 0.3 minus 0.1, 0.2Z, right? Let's convert him into a fraction. So that's 2 tenths times Z is equal to 21, right? So now we multiply both sides by the reciprocal 10 over 2, 10 over 2, right? That cancels out, and it's going to leave me with, ooh, what is that? 210, remember this is over 1, right? So 21 times 10, just put a 0 on there, 210 divided by 2 is equal to Z, and Z, so what is that? Well, we can reduce that, right, because 2 will go into that, won't it? How many times will 2 go into 210? 210 divided by 2 is 105, isn't it? Z is equal to 105. Okay? Piece of cake, right? Let's do one more. Okay. All right, I hope you're getting this. Let's do one more. Here we go, last one. 0.3 times D plus 1. Ooh, that smells like distributive properties, doesn't it? equals 2.7. Let's distribute the 0.3 first. We'll do that first, right? All right, so what do we get? 0.3d plus, ooh, 0.3 times one. Well, one times anything is still the same thing, right? So it's still 0.3 equals 2.7. Um, let's see. I guess the easiest thing to do is get that guy on the other side. So let's subtract 0.3. So that goes to zero minus 0.3. So 0.3D is equal to 2.7 minus 0.3. What do you think? 2.4, right? Okay. And then let's, let's get rid of all our decimals, okay? So 3 tenths D is equal to, this is 2 and 4 tenths, okay? Now we have to do our trick. Remember our trick we got to multiply the bottom and add the top. Here we go. So that is equal to 2 times 10 is 20, plus 4 is 24 tenths. Okay. How do I get rid of a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. Thank you. Very good. 10 over point, no, over 3. Okay. So our 3s go away, our 10s go away. And then over here, we got to multiply by 10 over 3. So D is equal to... Tens cancel out. How many times does three go into 24? Um, eight, right? Eight times. Bam. Man, we are so good. Okay, gang, does this make sense? I hope so. All right, see you next time.